Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to sew in hanger loops, um, hanging loops, and uh, hang loops. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche? This channel is for you. Yeah, so like I said, um, we're going to work on sewing in hanging loops, and there's obviously a lot of different ways to do this, um, and there's different names for it, hanging loops, hanger loops, hang loops. I just happen to call them hang loops around the shop a lot, so that's probably what I'm going to use in this video, um, but you can call it anything you want among those three, and it's going to be just fine. So first thing I want to talk about is something that we will see commonly on gowns. We will see hang loops that have been sewn incorrectly and they're sewn through only to the boning and the boning has actually been broken by the weight of the dress um, and it can actually cause um, this curved out distortion under the arms of the bride. Um, now here's a very elaborate way of sewing some hang loops. This has six hang loops. It's very thorough. The weight of the gown is evenly dispersed. This is going to be long lasting with very little damage to the gown. So as you can see, there's quite a spectrum of the way that you can sew these in. So uh, let's start with the first way. Um, this is going to be for a very light gown, very sheer, can't handle a lot of weight, and it has straps. So that's going to make it different the way that you're going to sew in these hang loops. I'm measuring out right now a quarter of an inch wide ribbon, and I'm taking it from the waist up to the underarm and then above the strap. So we need the ribbon to actually um, extend higher than the strap. It needs to be longer then where the strap goes that way when the dress is hanging there is no weight of the gown on the straps that could stretch the straps out we went all the weight to be on this hang loop on this ribbon so here i am measuring it just to make sure um, that that's the right length now you can sew this in either by tacking through or you can actually open the seam where the bodice meets the skirt feed it through there um, and sew it that way. It's actually uh, safer for the dress long term. Oh, here I'm heat sealing the end of the ribbon. Um, it's actually safer for the dress long term if you just tack it through rather than opening the seam where the bodice and the skirt meet. That's just going to put undue pressure on that seam and possibly cause it to come loose. So that would be terrible. So I'm just going to hand tack this good and strong. Now at the underarm part, I'm going to do Oh dear, we did a video about this too. It's a tailor's tack. It's a crochet loop. Um, it's got all different kinds of, of names here. But anyways, that's what I'm going to do. I'm kind of doing a little slow for you to see. I probably did that. This also called a chain tack. I probably did that like uh, 10 chains long. And then I'm going to knot it off three times. Hide the tail. Of course, all these, um, as you know, I use the hypo cement to cement the knots so they don't come unknotted. But what we've done is we've created a little loop to run that ribbon through so that the weight of the dress is actually being pulled on at the, the waist of the dress where the dress is strongest. It's fed up through this loop and that's going to hold up the top of the bodice. And then um, the loop of ribbon is going to hook to the hanger so that there's no stress at all on the straps. So that's the engineering behind this style of hang loop. Um, you are going to have to just consider the style of the dress, its strong points, its weak points, how it needs to hang when you're deciding how to do the hang loop. And there's that chain tack I wanted to show you just show it to you up close for those of you who are not familiar with it there is an entire video here on my channel about how to make those and here's the dress hanging and I'm going to double the hang loop here that that does a couple things it shortens it and then it also uh, keeps it from slipping off the hanger so easily so then you're gonna put the straps up there do the closure Make sure there's no stress at all on those straps so that they're not stretched out for her wedding day. And now the dress looks beautiful and ready to roll. Uh, 
All right, hang loop style number two. So this one we are dealing with, again, a dress that was not sewn correctly to begin with. Um, and what it was doing, it was stretching the dress and causing the dress to be misshapen. So we're going to replace this. And I'm going to first show you just a simple, cheap, low quality way to do it. It's not going to cause any damage to the dress. It's still gonna look just fine, but it's not very elaborate. So it's going to be uh, stitching in the ditch um, for a new hang loop. Um, this is gonna be something that would be no charge, um, you know, low budget bride, somebody who doesn't wanna invest a lot of time in things that are unseen. Okay, so I know we talk about a lot of times here, the spectrum of quality for sewing is immense. Um, you can do the same project several different ways and it can take 10 minutes or it could take three hours So this is your quick little 30 second deal. It's called stitching in the ditch The name of that comes from a quilting technique But basically you're gonna do a top stitch down the side seam of that bodice um, Some of these dresses it would only be appropriate to do this if the dress had an overlay which this dress does have um, the overlay is going to cover that seam that's under the arm. Um, but then other dresses, it's perfectly appropriate even if that stitch is on the out on the outermost layer, just because it's completely unseen. Um, so here it is in detail what that looks like. And I always do my loops where they loop toward the bust. That way, it's easier. Um, to hide and less likely to come out and, and put on a show in a low back gown. All right, so number three, this is going to be a lot higher quality for the same style dress. This dress has a, a sweetheart bust line that's almost like shells that ex extend up the top of the front of the bodice, and it has an extremely low back. So um, let's open up this side seam here and we're gonna feed the ribbon through. And I'm gonna show you, just like I said, a higher quality, more elaborate way of sewing this hang loop in. We're gonna feed it through. You can also pull it through um, from the right side of the garment. You can tunnel up through the skirt and pull it through if you have trouble. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna re-sew that seam. That's the side seam of the lining. And then you're gonna do a tack on the inside that goes all the way to the seam allowance of your shell layer, your outer layer of the bodice. So that way everything isn't just pulling on the lining and kind of pulling the dress wrong side out, um, like in that picture that I started with. So here I am, I'm gonna start over, and this time it's not just gonna be me demonstrating with gestures, I'm actually gonna do this for you to see. Some of these parts are going to be sped up just because it's kind of obvious what I'm doing or it's some, something I've covered in other videos and I treasure your time. So here we go. I've got the loops in there. And we're going to sew that seam back together. I don't ever recommend this being the only step because like I was saying earlier, the weight of the dress could actually rip that seam open um, and your lining layer is very important with boning and whatnot, all the pressure that it's under. Um, so you're definitely going to want some secondary force holding this together. So in this case, that's why I am going to tack the seam allowance of the lining to the seam allowance of the shell or the outer layer. While I'm sewing this, don't forget to hit subscribe. If you've already subscribed and you want to be notified when I upload a video, just hit the bell beside the button that says subscribed. Somebody was asking about that the other day. You may not see it on mobile. Um, you might only see it on desktop. Also, something interesting I learned this week about YouTube is that they watch your um, interaction uh, with the different channels and a channel that you interact more with that is you watch the videos you watch the full length of the videos you hit like you comment if you interact actively with that video you're much more likely to be notified when that channel uploads so that's kind of interesting um, so if you've just not been on the radar with a channel they don't want to bother you um, so when we say like share and subscribe it does a lot for you 
um, the algorithm is watching and they know what you like. And so it's going to cater the experience to you. All right, so what I'm doing now, I'm going to show you with a little sketch here. I'm putting in this top stitch that runs along the inside of the bodice. So I just wanted this sketch to orient you uh, to where I'm sewing on the machine. Because as you can see, this kind of looks like a pile of laundry right now. And you're not always going to be able to get at this with a machine. A lot of times you're going to have to hand stitch this. Um, but I am definitely making sure that the seam allowance, you see me reaching my right hand up underneath there, I'm taking my foot off of the pedal so that I don't accidentally run over my hand and it's entrapped in there. But I'm going to make sure that that seam allowance for the bodice edge is turned to the left and I'm sewing on that. So here's this final result of that top stitch. Looks very, very nice and professional and it's going to run up. You'll see just how sharp this swoop is to the bodice front on this gown. Whoa, <laughs> that's what you call a low back gown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put another one of those chain tacks, and again, I'm gonna do probably about 10 of those little uh, crochet stitches there. I'm gonna put that tack there, and uh, this is up toward the front of the bodice. That way we are supporting uh, this bodice and being vertical and supporting the boning so that it's not going to flop forward and train the boning to lay in an unflattering way. So the final step of this is going to be what we did on that low budget dress. We're going to do um, on this high budget hanging loop and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. And this is perfectly fine. Number one, it has an overlay. Number two, even if it didn't, um, it just sunk down in there and it's not visible. And it's just another step of holding these layers together. Remember, we tacked it on the inside, um, but bringing it up all the way to the top edge of the bodice really helps, um, helps the dress not to get misshapen over time. And there you can see the detail of it, how hidden that is. And that just looks beautiful. So that's your, that's your high-end way of sewing it in. I hope this has helped you. In the comments down below, what do you call these things with all these different names? And also, I know I highlighted three different ways of doing this, but there's endless ways, really. So share with us down below the way you like to do it. Also share with us your clients' thoughts about their favorite ways for you to do this. Thanks again for your time.